So hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I thought I would share with you something a little bit different. Um, this is a Franklin planner that I purchased um, on Jet Pen, no, not Jet Pens, on Amazon Japan last year. And I used it pretty extensively in the first quarter of the year last year and really, really liked it. And I thought I would share with you both how I used it last year and what the 2021 versions look like, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, just an alternative planner that you could use. So you'll see that I have here a Moterm cover. This is just a lychee Moterm leather cover that I purchased in the B6 size. This fits perfectly. And the nice thing about this is it has that nice big back pocket. Um, and this is pretty much what I used for the uh, Franklin cover, Franklin planner as a cover last year, although I did use a B6 um, traveler's notebook cover for a while, um, although I did quit using that, and I'll show you why in just a minute. But let me just walk you through what this looks like and how I used it last year. Um, first of all, I'll start with just showing you the 2021 so you can get an idea of what you get. So in the B6 size, you'll get a planner, it is Tomoe River Paper. This is a weekly and daily and monthly. So I'll show you that in just a minute. It has the whole year in one book. And then it also comes with this little notebook that is that says Planner Guide and Forms. And basically what it has in it is the um, Franklin Covey way of planning. Although you'll see, because it's a Japanese planner, it's all in Japanese, so that wasn't really helpful to me, but I'll show you what I did do with this little book last year and how I made it work for me. There's a lot of, um, I think, pages that you could probably use if you wanted to, like this mission statement page. You could just cover that up and have a nice note page. Here's your goal planning. Um, there's an expense tracker. Um, this is and there's also a budget worksheet with what's with one quarter per page, um, yearly income and expense tracker, uh, meeting planner, contacts, and then there's uh, some notes in the back here, project planner, and then a whole bunch of notes pages in the back, future planning. So these pages, I think, are useful and helpful. This book is a little bit smaller, as you'll see, than the notebook itself. So it's kind of like the Hobonichi uh, supplement and the A6 size, the weekly supplement. So you could tuck it in into your cover and have it, you know, be a little bit smaller. Um, but I'll show you what I did with mine from last year and probably what I do the same thing um, this year if and when I use this. Right now, I'm so happy with my weeks that I'm hesitant to even mess this up um, and mess up my planning system. Although there's a part of me that really wants to use this and the more I flip through it, the more um, it makes me want to use it. But anyway, this is last year's and I'll show you how I used this. I was very happy using it because of the way that I plan. I'm kind of a funnel planner. So if you think about a funnel, I start at a, you know, the long range year at a glance pages and I use those like I'm already talking about and thinking about 2022 stuff and I put that out there in, in the year at a glance pages. And then the monthly pages, as far out as I know, doctor's appointments, graduation dates, weddings, you know, whatever, I plan those out in the monthly. And then the weekly, I usually put those pages together in the current month. So like today's February 1st, yesterday I sat down and moved everything from my monthly pages into my weekly pages in my Hobonichi Weeks. And then I would do each day as it comes, um, whether that's bullet journaling, whether that's in a daily planner like the, that, this, whether that's in my Hobonichi Cousin, whatever type of planner. That's just how I've always done things. It's that funnel type of thing. So I don't touch the dailies until usually the day of or the day before. And I just try to work um, in increasing levels of detail as I go down through the funnel. So. Let me show you how I used this last year. Um, I just put some pictures in the front cover and the back cover. You can see there's packing tape here and there's actually a tear right there. And that's why I quit using the um, Traveler's Notebook because I had this in a Traveler's Notebook. It got wet, um, some water spilled on it and that made the cardboard tear. So not only did it make me sad, um, but it also damaged my book. So that was when I moved into the Moterm cover just because I felt like 
um, I didn't want to have that continuous uh, friction on the, the spine from the elastics of a, of a traveler's notebook. Um, in the very front, there is some contact information um, page here, and then I just put some stickers. That's my honey's company where he works. This was a blank page, and I put um, a calendar for a class that I was taking last year. Then you've got your, your year at a glance and your year ahead. I just covered this one up with post-it notes. And I always use this one to just kind of at a glance mark with my highlighters, uh, school holidays, uh, travel, that type of thing, so that I can quickly see when I'm on a phone call or making an appointment without having to flip through multiple pages where things were at. You can see here, I started um, out listing quarantine days and then I realized that was kind of fruitless, so I quit because I, I figured the whole rest of 2020 would have been pink, so I just didn't bother. This um, was actually in the planner itself was a December 2019 monthly, so I'll show you in the 2021. When you go past that forward planning page, then you have your um, December 2020, so this would have been December 2019, and I covered it up with my daughter's school calendar, so it was easy for me to access. I printed this on some Tomoe River paper on my printer and then just taped it in. Um, and then you move into the, the monthlies, and again, let me pull out the 2021 so I can show you one that's not been decorated, what it looks like. You can see here that it's just lines. It's not grid, which I like actually. Um, and then over here you have a place for tasks and goals. Um, what I did last year was I added this gray line each month and I highlighted the Saturday and Sunday um, in gray just to make it very visually obvious this was the weekend, this was the week um, or the weekdays. And I did that through the whole year, um, just at once. Went ahead and sat down and did that when I set this up. And then I set these up, one was for finances, one was for uh, things I wanted to be sure either got done or important dates that I needed to be aware of. And a lot of times that's what I do is use this column when I'm planning months and months ahead, and then I'll write it in on the day when that day comes. Um, so yeah, I, love the way they have this set up. I didn't mind not having a grid um, and just pretty much the same way I do all of my monthlies, planning further out. Um, so this goes all the way through until December. And then after December, you have, this is 2021 future planning. So this would have been you know, getting ready for the next year. So you can see I had already marked out school holidays um, for the rest of 2021. And then you jump right into the meat of the planner. And the way this is set up, which is part of what I love so much about it, is that it has what a weekly page as well as a daily page. So let me just flip to a clean one here to show you. So you have the weekly page here, which is a place for you to list all of your weekly tasks. And then this is all related to the weekly compass activities you would do if you were following the Franklin Covey method. I didn't use it that way. I'll show you what I did in just a minute. Um, and then you have this daily page, one for each day of the week. So you have your seven days a week plus the one weekly compass page. So eight pages per week, um, which to me, is perfect because if I was doing a bullet journal, that's exactly how I would have set it up. And when I was using a Stalogy um, last year in a B6, that's exactly how I set it up. And that's actually what led me to this Franklin Covey planner because when I started using this, I didn't have to draw anything in, which was beautiful to me, absolutely beautiful and saved me so much time. Um, so the way it's set up, I'll just show you one that I've, I've filled in last year when I was using this. Um, you know, your weekly tasks are here. I use this section up here for meal planning for a while. Um, you have your, your prioritized daily task list, a place for your appointments. It starts at 7 a.m., goes to 10 p.m., and then a place for daily notes, which I really liked. I liked being able to have a place to journal, write some notes about the day, and still keep track of my to-dos and my, um, 
events that were timed events. You'll notice I don't put anything work related. This is all personal. I keep my work stuff completely separate. Um, my work calendar is way too volatile to write it down anywhere. I just work straight out of Outlook. And then I keep a work bullet journal, which I'll show you in a future video how I do that. So anyway, this is pretty much what it looks like. Here's the second week. Um, I'll just flip through and show you. I started playing with some stickers um, as I started really getting comfortable in this planner. Just really liked having this. So my meal plan's still here. Here's my weekly to-dos. Um, more stickers. My meal plan I moved down here. I started doing up here a tracker just to keep track of um, some things that I wanted to be more um, front of mind about. Continuing to use some stickers. You'll see a lot of stuff is highlighted and I'll show you in the back the pen test page. But I found that what worked the best for me was the same pen that you would use in your Hobonichi, the uh, Uni pen, um, Uni Jetstream pen. That was the one that was just, it's, if you're gonna highlight, that's the best pen to use for Tomoe River paper. Um, so yeah, moving forward, here's another week where I kept the tracker up here. I started adding in gratitude and my to-do list and my menu plan moved over here. Um, just, you know, still trying to get, I think I was only two or three weeks into using this planner, so I was still trying to get um, a feel for, you know, how I wanted to use it. Here I used my Hobonichi stencil for the seven days a week for my tracker, continuing my gratitude no meal planning whatsoever. This was after I'd had foot surgery, so I was uh, confined to my recliner and my family was in charge of feeding everybody, so I didn't worry about what the meal plans were. Um, I also used this section over here, this last column to track my meds when I was recovering from my foot surgery, so it was nice to see, you know, when I took something I didn't have to remember. Um, so this week is uh, the second week in February, and this is where I started to realize that I was missing um, having a weekly view of appointments for the week. So I drew this in. If you look at the weekly view just by itself, you'll see that, um, where did it go? You'll see that there's a line already here, and I had counted up and I could have four, four lines per day, except for Saturday and Sunday. I think it was only three for Saturday and Sunday. Um, and so I just drew this um, here with a highlighter and wrote the days in sideways, and that just gave me a place to put it a really quick uh, glance, any appointments that we had um, for the week. I was That's the only thing I found that I was missing from what I had been doing in my Stalogy bullet journal. So I just duplicated it here. Most of the stickers you see are either from old um, Happy Planner sticker books or Coco Daisy. As I said, I'm a dedicated Coco Daisy um, subscriber. So here you can see uh, the line was already there. I just drew the horizontal lines in, wrote the days of the week, but I really like that. Um, and you can also see gratitude is gone. I was no longer grateful, I guess. Um, just quit writing it down. That just didn't didn't go. Um, lots of journaling. I really liked having that place to journal. And um, yeah. So again, this was just the coolest little planner. And the more I flip through it, the more it makes me want to use it again. But I'm trying to be... Uh, stable and faithful in my Hobonichi weeks and not move. Um, here's the first week of quarantine. So um, I don't know if I showed you in the monthly, but I had started um, writing or highlighting in pink the quarantine because I thought it was only going to be a couple of weeks. And then when I realized the whole month of April was pink, I quit. I was just like, forget it. Um, and I had started out highlighting the weeks of quarantine. And then you'll see that kind of went by the wayside too, because you know, we were quarantining what seemed like forever. Um, so here's, um, yeah, just tracking pollen. I like to track the pollen count in the springtime just because it's the numbers get so crazy and I like to see how ridiculous they get. Um, pretty cool little planner. Like I said, the more I flip through what I had done, it makes me want to go back. 
About May is when I quit using it, though, until August. I was moving back into my bigger Hobonichi or a bullet journal from May until about, I guess, October of last year. I kind of bounced around in a lot of different planners just because uh, life was just crazy. And what I have found about myself is that when I feel out of control in my life, for some reason, I feel like a new planner is going to give me control. And so I finally recognized that about myself and I'm doing better about not setting up new planners reactively. But what I learned last year through all of the craziness that was 2020 was that I did a lot of jumping around in planners and it was really, I think, an emotional attempt to find control where there was no control in my life. Um, had we not had the things happen in March and April last year that happened in our world, I may have still stayed in this all the way through because I really, really liked it. Um, which is why I bought the one for 2021 because I thought, hey, I might use this again. And if I wasn't so in love with my weeks, I probably would. But I'm trying to stay faithful to the weeks right now. So I'm not sure I'll set this up just yet. Um, the tabs you see here are the same ones that I have been using in my Hobonichis for years. They're from Jet Pens. I'll include the link um, in the notes below. But let me flip to the back. So after December, it goes just a couple days in January to finish out the year. And then there's just a few notes pages. So I had a book um, log. I had a movie log. And then you'll see there's a section here that is like its own little signature. And I literally scotch taped this in. I pulled it out of the back of this um, extra book in the back back here. Um, there are a bunch of note pages. And since I wasn't going to use this book, I just cut this signature out. Um, and I put it in here with some scotch tape so that I could have some extra note pages. Um, so that's what that is here. And then... Beyond that, I also found a couple of other pages that I liked in here and I wanted to use. I figured if I was cutting it up, I might as well make use of everything. And so I took these pages, where are they? This, the yearly income and expense tracking because I like to track my bills. I like to see the whole year at a glance and there was a place for me to write down all my bills and then for each month, how much it was and a little check mark if it was paid for both our personal bills as well as our business bills. So I used this and I just took it and stuck it in here. Um, and you'll see I had a post-it flag that says bills. And I just stuck it in here, um, again, scotch taped it in um, so that I could use those pages. So that was another one that I liked out of this book. I think the other one, if I were to do this again, that I would probably steal for use is the future planning pages here. So this one, this is the 2021 version. So there's a 2022, 23, 24, and 25. I don't know about you guys, but I can't fathom planning that far in advance, but I would like to have these two um, because my daughter graduates next year. So it'd be nice to start to write down some of her senior events and things like that and just be sure I had them in one one place. So I would probably still hack this little book up and just tape the pages into the book. Um, but I tried to replicate the things that I had in the collections in my bullet journal in the back of these pages, which is why I wanted those extra notes pages so I could do that. Um, so yeah, that's what... I had back here. Here's a pen test page that I had done just trying some different pens out. And you can see, obviously, this is Tomoe River paper. So it's it's finicky paper. To me, it's worth it because of the, the feel that it has and the thinness and the fact that you get a whole year and it's only that thick. I mean, goodness gracious, that's just amazing. Um, but you can see there's a lot of smearing with any type of gel, liquidy type of ink. And that's why I said I just found that the best thing to use was the hobo pen if you're going to do any highlighting. Um, and I have a little heart here to remind me because what I'll do is I'll get bored with a pen and I'll be like, oh, I'm going to use another one. How did it look? And I'll go back here and look and then I can't remember if I liked it or not. So I put a heart next to the ones that I like so when I go back later, I can remember. Um, 
so yeah, that's the little um, Franklin Planner organizer. I also got the A6 version here uh, to try. These are not super expensive. I want to say that the B6 was like maybe $30 and this was like maybe $26 or something like that. I, again, I got them on Amazon Japan. I can't remember exactly. Took about a week to get here. Uh, this year, last year, I think it only took me three days to get here. This one is very similar to the B6 size, but you'll see there's no separate book. All of those pages that were in the separate book are in the front of this book, um, which I don't understand why they did that because you would think with a smaller book footprint itself, you would want less bulk, but um, I would probably just either not use these pages or just use them for scratch paper or pay, tape um, other stuff over top of those pages. Um, here's your monthly calendar. It's very similar to what you saw in the B6. Then it goes um, into directly into your planning pages. Um, you do have this little bitty at a glance. And then just comparing this to the B6, just to give you an idea of what it looks like A6 to B6, you can see you have the same weekly compass section here. It's now just a third. And then this section here is the two thirds at the top. If I were to use this, I'd probably make that my meal plan. And I maybe that would be my tracker. I don't know. And then the tasks themselves, these lines are twice as thick, uh, twice as wide. It's like two of these rows. But I guess that's because they figure you're going to have to maybe have it fill in two, you know, right twice. Just because it's not as wide as what you have here. Um, the days themselves, very similar um, you can see it's 7 to 10, just like this is 7 to 10. Um, the top is the same. It's just smaller because it's A6. And then you have your daily notes. Um, in the back, there's the 2022 future planning. So it's tiny, but it's still, you know, four pages, one quarter per page. And then you only get a pathetic four pages of notes. So I would, and you don't even have the extra notes that the B6 has that was in this little front section. So I'd probably have to use some type of supplement if I were gonna use this. Um, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about this. I bought it just to satisfy my curiosity, but I don't know that I would actually use it. This B6 size is almost perfect in my opinion. So I probably would just keep using that if I were to go back to this. Um, but like I said, right now I'm trying to not upset the apple cart and just continue to use my Franklin Cub. No, I'm continuing to use my Hobonichi. Was that a Freudian slip? Um, continuing to use my Hobonichi weeks because it works. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Um, but if something happens and I uh, just have a freak out, uh, this would probably be, well, not this, this would probably be what I would go to in the future, um, just because I like having that week and day together. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful, and um, I hope that it was interesting. If you um, have any questions, feel free to just uh, put a comment down below. I will try to answer it as best as I can, and if you like this video, please subscribe, and uh Click the thumbs up so that um, I can get some feedback as to what you like and what you don't like. And I will be back with another video soon. Take care and stay healthy, everybody. Mm -hmm.